Welcome back to Golden Rule Radio, where our intro today will not nearly meet expectations if you watched last week's show. We'll also talk about the metals market today, and gold breaking out above 1300 has continued to rise to our number at 1335 and is acting very strong in this move. It has been strong. I mean, it's blowing through the technicals that you and Miles have discussed the last couple of weeks. I mean, you really called for resistance at 1335. We're now at an 11 month high breaking over even the 1340 mark. We've come down just a little bit. We're off about $2 today, but you know, up 16% on the year now. Silver is finally narrowing that gap a little bit as well. What's driving this bullishness? I mean, are we just really in this, you know? Yeah, money's moved into safe havens. And so gold's benefited from that. The next levels on gold will be the 1375 level, which is last year's high. Once we get above there, I'll go ahead and put out the number of about 1430 being the next point where we will reach. But if you're sitting on the fence and you're not watching this thinking, I better get in, any weakness that we see in the price of gold, if we do, that's your opportunity. We talked about opportunity in the gold market way back when we first started this show, January, February. We called some bottoms there and said, that, those are your opportunities. I would be looking to be buying gold, silver, platinum on any weakness here. I would too. And, and Robert, to your point, not only do we point out potential bullishness in the prices, but it really isn't always about price. It really can be about value. Right. And you mentioned silver and platinum. Those are the best values. And within each category, there's the best value within silver, within platinum. There's the best value within gold. You can have the best value in a premium market. Yes, not to take away from gold, but I did see on the World Platinum Investment Council website on their last report that they thought that the gold platinum ratio had bottomed, meaning platinum will start to outperform gold. Right now, it's about $300 below the price of gold. That is a huge opportunity. It really is. And it's actually strengthened against palladium. It's a minuscule move, but still 1.07. We bottomed it around 1.02, almost parity. Uh, when you divide platinum by palladium price. So again, I had a client this week. This is when you know, too, that things are starting to really move. He heard about it from somewhere else other than what we specialize in. And he said, hey, what do you think about platinum? I kind of laughed because we've been screaming from the rooftops if you've been listening to the show the last few months about platinum. So we've moved everybody out of palladium into platinum for a reason. And we are starting to see that, that ratio tighten. I do think we need stronger inflationary numbers you know, to, to really to do what we need it to do. But that being said, I think we've seen the start. We have, and silver is showing the same thing above Miles's number from last week, and it's right there at 18. It penetrated 18. So looking like it's proving itself from a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, just two weeks ago, we were talking about how it was up 9% on the year. Now it's up 12%. That's a big 3% move in just a couple of weeks. And it's narrowed the gap by a full point on that gold-silver ratio. So stay patient with us, like we've been saying. Stay with the silver, especially if you're in a storage account or in an IRA. Man, we love to manage silver and platinum in those IRA accounts because there's no shipping. We talk about these different metals individually in relation to each other, but I'm going to put it out there just from a big picture standpoint. If you are looking at the metals market, we will put an offer to look at maybe what you're invested in and let us build a dynamic portfolio for you. There are many different strategies within the metals market that we can employ, whether it's inside an IRA, whether it's outside an IRA, and these little factors matter, whether you wanna take possession of a lot of silver, whether you'd rather store it and trade it that way, we can fine tune what makes the most sense for you. So I invite you to call us and start a dynamic portfolio with us. Jumping to the dollar index, again, it's down 10% for the year. It is sitting right at 92. It's actually right below the previous close, uh, but it hasn't gone down to the very low intraday low that we talked about possibly being a reversal in the dollar. So you're at a low. Let's see where it closes today. Maybe it's just ready to continue to go lower without even any pop up. Yeah, I think that we could see a pop here in the short term in the dollar. I think the Federal Reserve is concerned about it. You know, we now have Kaplan, the Dallas Fed chair, urging caution on on further tightening. They don't want to raise interest rates right now. They fear that deflation is going to sort of rule the roost here in the short term. And that being said, what could offset that is, 
you know, a second natural disaster occurring here in a matter of just two weeks with Irma hitting the coast. And the concern there, obviously, is FEMA's going to be broke on Friday, supposedly. All budget expectations are that it's going to be out of money. And so here you go again. You're going to have to shuffle money from one budget category to another. But really what we know that it means is just more money printing is on the horizon. So uh, that, that's another reason. If they try to tighten right now, that's just the economy cannot possibly handle it. The Fed jargon lately has just been disgusting. I mean, let's look at this quote by Kashkari yesterday. Kashkari of the Fed, he says, it's very possible that our rate hikes over the past 18 months are leading to slower job growth, leaving more people on the sidelines, leading to lower wage growth, and leading to lower inflation and inflation expectations. These premature rate hikes that we are embarking on, they're not free. And I think we need to remind ourselves of that. Tell me what that means. I I think it means... He's playing such a political game and pandering to the emotional side, mentioning slower job growth and leaving more people on the sidelines. Oh, dear. Yeah, and Robert, I think it means too. I mean, I'm not saying that the rate hikes aren't premature, but this is this is political jargon, right? This is this is political bantering, and you can sit there and try to place blame. But he was involved in those rate hikes, right? And 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 we were saying on this show that you needed to see inflation first. Don't hike rates in fear of inflation. Let inflation catch some legs, and and if it doesn't, then then you don't rate hike. And that's what they're doing now. So you're right. Hearing him say that is super frustrating, just like Goldman Sachs coming out and saying gold is the currency of last resort. Are you kidding me? Like that, again, that that's that, that's manipulation of a market, much like you're talking about Kashkari with the manipulation of a mindset from a political standpoint. So if Goldman Sachs really thinks that gold is going lower and that gold is a currency of last resort, tell that to a Venezuelan. You know, tell that to somebody that, that had all operations seized down in Texas with Hurricane Harvey. Wouldn't you have wanted to have had some tangible asset in your hand when you were locked out of the banking system? Well, before we leave the Fed, I, you know, I'll get off the soapbox here in a sec. I apologize. But doesn't it seem, Robert, like it's in total disarray? I mean, you've got Stanley Fisher stepping down as vice chair. You've got Kashkari saying that. You've got Kaplan. The doves and the hawks are fighting each other. Nobody really knows whether to raise rates or not. And it doesn't seem like there's a clear, a clear direction, a clear consensus so it doesn't surprise me that he's stepping down right here. I wouldn't want to be involved in that in those policy decisions. Does he see a crisis coming? I think so. He doesn't want to be blamed for it. Yep. It's and to possible. that point, Kashkari may be making a legitimate point. Some of this could be the Fed's fault on the economic slowdown. But look, it was it was slow to begin with. So anyway, we can't end the show without mentioning North Korea. It's obviously putting wind in the sails of gold as well. You know, this continued saber rattling. I hope there's not war but it sure seems like we're being set up for one. According to the Arms Control Association, there have been 36 North Korean nuclear or missile tests since 1993. In 19 of the inflammatory statements involving North Korea, the S&P 500 actually went up. (laughs) So you're saying it's good for stocks when North Korea has inflammatory comments? Could it be that the U.S. is about to flex their military might? There's something different about this conflict that involves the U.S. maybe halting trade with countries doing business with North Korea. Yep. That's different. That threat has changed the game. It really has. And it's it's increased tensions with Russia. Putin's sort of refusing to seize oil shipments to North Korea. You're seeing China, though, sort of get on board. I mean, when you when you threaten sanctions from a trade standpoint, I think that's finally what puts China over the top. But you're right. I, there's there's more political bantering going on here that's having some serious effect. Yeah, talking about the trade and halting it with anybody doing business with North Korea, I mean, it, it basically puts the corporate profits on the table. That's what's at risk, and I think that's what maybe the market is seeing and not going higher, the stock market that is, is kind of selling off a little bit, had a down day of a little bit over 1% the other day. So I think that's what's going on is the trade threats are actually starting to af- to affect people's decision making in that are we going higher are cor- corporate profits going to increase well if you clam up like a hermit and you don't do trade and you don't do business with these other countries doing business with North Korea then corporate profits shrink and we have to remember this is the fourth quarter coming up for the federal government and this is when you start to get some excitement 
going on in the markets and politically. So we'll be addressing that in future shows. Uh, For now, let's wrap up this week. And we appreciate you listening very much and returning to Golden Rule Radio. The best way to follow our information is to click the subscribe button below so that you can get updates on anything that McIlvany Financial posts to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter at ICA Gold. Thank you for listening. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.